For the past week, I have been ravenously collecting all possible data I could about the Digimon Pendulum Color to be able to present that information to the Digimon VPets community. As soon as the Japanese manual became available on February 22nd, I began work translating it and rewriting it to form the manual at digitamahatchery.com, and I followed the fans in Japan very closely that were posting pictures and logs of their experiences with the device. On February 26th, Cyanic, whom a lot of you already know as a member of the community who's absolutely brilliant at taking apart LCD toys and deciphering their code, he started work on sifting through the dumps of the pendulum colors and posting findings of note to the Discord server and to me directly. I stayed up way too late the next few nights going through the functions and tables and reshaping them into user-friendly charts, stats, and instructions. Thanks to the fact that Cyanic was retrieving the information directly, there was no need for guessing or extensive testing, and so I could focus on writing code and scripts for the site while adding content to the database. With our combined efforts, we managed to have the guide fully fleshed out about a week after these devices were released, which is something I never would have thought possible when I first started work on the site for the Pendulum version 20th back in 2018. Today is March 2nd as I record this, and it has been three days since I opened and started my two Pendulum colors that you see right here. I've got Nature Spirits and Deep Savers with Big Surprise, Okuamon on Nature Spirits, and Zudomon on the Deep Savers. Yeah, I know. I, I'm very consistent, all right? It's fine. Either way, now that I've got them in their perfect stages, I've been with them for a few days, and now that I've got all the information sifted through for the devices themselves, I wanted to be able to bring that information to everyone in the form of a video. And this is going to be a big video because I want to teach you just about basically everything there is to know. That might not be for everyone, I know. Not everyone wants a big, long video going through every little feature of these devices. And so I will be also doing a much shorter review video on the devices as well. So just uh, wait a little bit after this video comes out and uh, you should be able to watch that one instead if you like, or if you uh, wanna come back to this later and once you're ready to start up your device and you're like, well, I wanna know what I'm doing, this is gonna be the perfect video to go through because I'm gonna be talking about literally everything that is uh, on these devices. So um, for the rest of you that are wanting to stick around and check out everything that there is about these, let's go ahead and get rolling. So the first thing to talk about is the fact that these are remake devices, remakes of the original Digimon Pendulum series. I got my Nature Spirits and Deep Savers originals right here. This is not my first Deep Savers device. I bought this one secondhand, hence the weird frame choice that someone else did to this before I owned it. Uh, my original Pendulum doesn't connect anymore, unfortunately, so I got this one to replace it. But yeah, overall, these are supposed to be tributes to these that offer a lot of the same functionality while making quality of life changes. These are not the first remakes, though, I will say. Um, the, the Pendulum series was first remade by not Bandai Japan, but Bandai of uh, Southeast Asia when they made the Digital Monster 6, which was based on the original Nature Spirits Pendulum. And then they made the Pendulum Cycle series, which was based on versions 2 through 5 of the Digimon uh, Pendulum series. So that was the, the first time they were remade. They changed a lot of functionality, and so they weren't by any means the same devices whatsoever. The uh, version 6 of the Digital Monster was based on the Digital Monster devices as well, so had those functionalities, while the cycle was very much its own thing and a very, very bizarre V-Pet overall. Not going to talk about that um, too much today, though. The other time they were remade, um, the, well, the next one, I should say, because it's not just one, this is the fourth time they were remade. So the second time was Digimon Pendulum Revive and Survive, which were Java phone apps back in the day. I don't know if y'all remember having those flip phones with all the Java games with terrible ports of, like, Castlevania and stuff that ran at about two frames a second. Uh, those were weird times, all right? We wanted to play games on our phone, no matter how awful they would look. But they made um, actual virtual pets for them, Bondi did. They made uh, the digital original Digital Monster, and they made the Digimon Pendulums, which were had two versions, Revive and Survive, which they'd emulate that later. More on that in a second. And also, not to confuse those with the Digital Monster version Revive and Digimon Survive, the video game. They just happen to be named very similarly. Unfortunately, I've never played Revive or Survive because they are lost media at the moment. If anyone has them, and I know none of you listening do, but if anyone has them, please, 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 please um, submit them to me. I, there's a Java phone app, um, an old school uh, like uh, restoration effort going on, I guess it is. I'm a member of that Discord community just for Digimon Revive or Survive to see if it ever pops up, but... Never has, but if any of you have it, let me know. So then Digimon Survive and Revive, those were the second time. Uh, the third time was the Digimon, or the Digimon Pendulum version 20th, which just like the Digital Monster version 20th, was a combined version of several of the old Pendulums. So there were three on one version, three on the other, which is actually how Revive and Survive were sold as well. 
and it offered a lot of new additional features. We'll go over some of that more. But now we are on the latest remake, the fourth one, which is these uh, pendulum colors here. That is a lot of times to go back. Bandai loves revisiting the original Digital Monster and Digimon Pendulum series, in case you have not been able to tell by now. So the originals did have um, two releases each, except for the uh, version 0, that was only one, but version 1s through 5 had a dot zero, which are both of these that I have here, and a dot five version associated with them. The dot fives had translucent shells, which we're kind of hoping that maybe someday they'll release translucent versions of these two to coincide with those. I don't know if we'll be able to get that or not. They did release more colors of the, uh, you know, first two versions of the Digital Monster Colors, so not impossible. Could happen. Uh, I wouldn't buy all six this time, mind you. I would buy just uh, Deep Savers one, most likely. Either way, um, so those original .o and .5 versions, we don't have separate ones for these. The, all of the Digimon that were on the original .os and .5s are on each of the Digimon Pendulums. So this has all the Nature Spirits 1.0 and all the Nature Spirits 1.5. So that you don't have to worry about having separate ones to have every Digimon in those fields. They're all on there. They are combined, so the evolution routes are a little bit mixed around. Similar, it's pretty much exactly what they did with the Pendulum 20th, just uh, different routes for evolutions than what the 20th went through. So as a note as well, uh, the Digimon Pendulum original series is kind of why I am obsessed with V-Pets. Uh, when I originally had my Digital Monster version 1 as a kid, you know, I played that a lot, uh, then watched the show, and then at some point I got the uh, Wonder Swan game, uh, for, uh, yeah, the Wonder Swan on uh, digi Digital Monster version Wonder Swan, that's what it was. It had a website on the back, and using that website, I was able to find out about the world of the pendulums that I did not know about, because those never released in the United States, and they just utterly fascinated me, and I loved um, looking them up, I loved finding out more about them, and wanted one severely, and eventually was able to get one after I'd gotten a job in high school, and so very much in love with the Pendulum series. Um, I've all I loved Digimon before I found out about it, but they were always kind of like, the thing that I saw, and I'm like, that's so cool, I really want one of those. So, um, they're very special to me, very much love them, very excited about this release. Like I say, this is a mix of old and new, so there's, not only do we have the old Digimon, but we have uh, new ones on there as well. And just as a disclaimer here, you'll see I've only got these two out. There is also a third version, Nightmare Soldiers. I do have it on the way, it just has not arrived yet. I got these ones first, so I didn't want to, you know, obviously wait for the last one to be able to make this video, because that won't be arriving until sometime next week, I'm sure. So, starting with just these ones, I'm sorry if you wanted to see the Nightmare Soldiers one showing off. I'll make some shorts of it when I get it, don't you worry. I will talk about it. So let's talk about the devices themselves. They both look exactly like you would expect. If you've ever seen a pendulum device in it before, there's uh, no new surprises here. As you can see, it's compared to the original, very, very similar in overall placement of everything, design. Obviously, battery door has been replaced with a charging port, so that's a uh, difference there. But other than that, Things are exactly where you would expect them to be. They even got these little ridges going on and all that. Keychain is a little bit different, same as it was on the Pendulum 20th, as you can see, but you know, whatever, don't really care about that. Um, but yeah, exactly what you would expect. They only come in one color each, so silver blue for the uh, Nature Spirits, blue and orange for Deep Sabers, and then red and black for Nightmare Soldiers. Do not like this orange. I have already purchased an extra Deep Savers Pendulum Z so I can steal its frame and buttons, which should be compatible. We'll see. Hopefully the buttons are as responsive as this, because I'll tell you right now, these pendulums have great responsiveness with their buttons. As you can see, if you turn them on real easy like that, and uh, I'm not, I don't have to press hard at all to do anything, which if you've ever um, worked with a pendulum before, you know that's not necessarily always the case. So. Um, yeah, happy to see these buttons are nice and responsive. We've got A for making selections, B for confirming selections, and C for canceling out of selections. They have some other purposes as well. As you can see, B also operates the clock, which is nice. And uh, yeah, it does that. We'll talk more about the, those functions later. We also have a reset button, which just turns the device off and on real quick for you, just like any other reset button does. This does have saving, so you don't have to worry about losing your progress when you uh, reset. It saves, uh, I believe, about once a minute if it's like the other moderns. I don't remember confirming that for sure, but either way, it saves enough to where you don't really worry about losing progress. Um, as far as the charging goes, because as we said, this has a charging port. It's got a lithium ion battery in there as opposed to classic uh, CR32 or LR44 batteries. So if we lift up this little tab right here, we will see. There it is. It's a USB-C port, which is very nice. Vital Bracelet didn't have USB-C, but the Digital Monster Color and the Pendulum Color both do have USB-C, so you should have stuff lying around to take care of that. As long as you have something that is outputting at 5 volts with um, that specification installed on your power block, then you shouldn't have anything to worry about, because that's what this is rated for, is to receive 
five volts from a uh, power block. I'll put that back in there. I will say, um, it's a bit disappointing to see this, but the way that they are wedging it in there, there's like just this, let's zoom in on that so you can see it better. There's just this little itty bitty tab right there that kind of keeps it in place. Not as firm as the Digital Monster Color, which had a uh, bigger tab that fit into the USB-C slot itself. I've already noticed this tab kind of came undone at one point while I was just shaking this device. And since you shake it, yeah, it's uh, not great. It's not, you know, going to hurt anything majorly, but just a, just a heads up to watch out for that um, as you play with this device. So moving on, um, as far as battery life goes, these devices, I have not, you know, obviously had enough time to really fully test battery life, but they should have about as much life as the Digital Monster version color that the internals haven't really changed. Um, I have not had to charge them yet. I have not even thought to charge them yet, so I should imagine that you'll get the same amount of use. For me, that generally means uh, a week of normal play will get me, I'll be able to get through that just fine. And then I charge once a week for about an hour and that keeps it going. Um, you could definitely get longer than a week and it will take more than an hour to charge it to full power. I, these things charge slow. Sorry, they do, but thankfully not to charge them that often. But usually I just do an hour a week and I'm good to roll. If I ever see it dip a little bit faster than I would have expected to, then I'll bump it up to an hour and a half, but I don't have to do that very frequently. So they are very uh, good at staying alive for a long time, unlike the Vital Bracelet, but we're not here to talk about that, are we? Okay, so let's say you've got your device and you've just opened it and you don't have see any tab to pull out of it because there's no batteries, so how do you turn this thing on? You just hold down the C button for a few seconds here. And there we go, we are met with a splash screen. It'll have a picture of, well, a silhouette, I should say, of the mascot Digimon for the device. In this case, Rukamon is the mascot for Deep Saber, so there it is. And if you've never um, run it before, you'll be immediately asked to set the clock. Um, in my case, since this is something I've already running, I have the option to either load or reset. If I load, I'll get my last saved data. If I reset, it will completely erase all data of the device that includes any Digimon you've raised, um, any progress you've made, any backgrounds you've unlocked, all that will be gone from reset. So I'm definitely not hitting reset right now. We're gonna hit load. And then it's asked me to set the clock, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do so. I'm not gonna set the real time, we'll just go with 1 p.m., sure. And there we go. Zudomon wakes up, it's immediately hungry. Before I do anything else, I'm just gonna adjust the brightness because that makes it easier to film. There we go, much better. All right, so as you see, I've got Zudomon, who is who I left off with. No problem loading it and getting that save back. So what I'm going to do, though, is we're not going to worry about raising Zudomon right now. Instead, we're going to start showing off basically what you would expect to see as soon as you start up your device. And this should be familiar to anyone who has raised a modern Digimon device before, or even an old one, too. It's just that the whole thing is a little bit shorter on modern devices. So to simulate that, I'm going to show you off a feature right away which is the backup feature. So if I go to lights, I go to change. Zudomon becomes a bunch of zeros and ones and it gets put into a zip folder and then we get a new egg. Now, first things first, I have to shake the crap out of this egg. I'm gonna do that. Reason being is that while your Digimon is preparing to hatch, which it currently is, you have one minute. And in that one minute, you have to get 100 shakes in. And the reason you do that is because if you do shake 100 times while it is an egg, then you will get a plus 10 boost to your power stat once it hatches. And that lasts the Digimon's entire life. So a free boost to power is definitely something you want because battles can be difficult as you raise your Digimon. So make sure to do the shaking. All right, I definitely shaked way more than 100 times, but that is all right because more than 100 is still 100. So there we go. We are met with our new little baby here. This is Pitchmon. And let's go ahead and just uh, talk about what we're going to do now that it has hatched. So you can see the call light on the bottom right is on. And that call light indicates that your Digimon needs something. That call light will turn on when its hunger meter runs out, when its strength meter runs out, or when it is time for it to sleep. So in this case, it is not sleepy as it is moving around. When they're sleepy, they just, you know, lay down and they got little Zs above them. So it wants food and it wants uh, strength. So we're going to give it food. We're going to go to the feeding option here. We have options for meat or protein. And we'll give it four protein because each Digimon can eat up to four pieces of food. And if I try to feed it one more, you'll see it refuses. It doesn't care. Um, and then we'll also just give it a one protein for right now. So the thing is, is that protein uh, will fill up your strength meter. But it also increases your weight more than meat does. It increases it by two instead of uh, just by uh, one, except for the stage one baby that we have here because they don't gain weight, but later on that will matter. And uh, so they increase the weight a little bit faster, which getting up to 99 gigabytes in weight will cause your Digimon to be sick. So that's a uh, part of the reason to avoid protein. Other reason is 
four protein will increase your injury rate in battle, but you can also, uh, and that's that's injury rate when you lose, by the way. When you lose, you have a 2% higher chance of getting injured, um, but you can also reduce that by successfully training or winning battles, so it's not too bad, but generally speaking, the way that you want to fill up your strength meter is using the training function. So when I go to that, and we'll take the stand out right there, when I go to the training function, you'll see it shows a color, and once it says count, I shake, and you'll see the color of the screen changes. And once I get the color that was shown to me on the count screen, then I stop, and that gives me a mega hit. That's five super hits in a row for those unaware. And there we go, look at that. Pitchmon is super happy about that. So if I was to not do red, and again, it shows red right there. Let's say we just uh, go to blue. Oh, I gotta shake harder than that, there we go. So I get one, Ooh, I only got one super hit, but it still is happy about it, so that's fine. As long as you shake a little bit, you're going to have a successful training, um, but if you want all super hits, which is a mega hit, then you want to go with the color that it shows you. So there's no need to remember specific numbers, there's just a need to look at the screen when the ready screen comes up, see what color it wants, and shake to that color. The color depends on the attribute of the Digimon you are raising. Pitchmon is... Has, well, has no attribute, which, in other words, we consider that free. I'll talk more about that later. Um, but because of that, it has red as its target. Vaccines also target red. Data targets uh, yellow, and virus targets blue. If you don't shake at all, then they will fail training, and you don't want that to happen because, you know, that's sad. You don't want to fail training. Um, fail training just means that you, while you still lose weight, you won't gain a strength heart, and you will um, not lose any injury percentage rate extra that you have at the moment. So... There we go. So that's what training is. That's how training works. And then the last thing about a baby, and it should be doing it here any second now, uh, is going to be pooping. But apart from that, apart from needing to feed it, to train it, and to clean up its poop, there is not much involved in stage one. And stage one will last for 10 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, fast forward to when this Digimon is about ready to evolve. It is now several minutes later, and Pitchmon has gone ahead and evolved into Pokemon. Meant to catch that on film, but I miscounted how much time there was. Either way, sorry about that. So, Pokemon is now a baby too, and it's going to go ahead and poop. Why not? Let's go ahead and clean that up real quick. There we go. So, baby twos don't have a whole lot they can do at this stage, so they can't battle and they can't do uh, any of that jazz, so it's just a matter of taking care of them. And at this point, how you take care of them does matter. Whatever baby one you have will always evolve into the same baby two, but baby twos have four options for evolution, and those options are going to vary based on how you take care of it. So things like your condition hearts and your effort hearts will start coming into play. So we'll talk more about those right now as we go into more of the menu options. So let's go ahead and go to our stats menu. As you can see right away, we have status and we have album. So we'll start with status. This is a New thing from the Digital Monster Color, um, which did not have this feature. This does. Other previous modern devices all had albums, but they were stored somewhere else. So this time the album is being stored on the status icon. So if we go to the status. So here's a few things we see. We see our uh, age, which is currently zero years. Your Digimon will age every 24 hours. And we also see its weight, which is currently seven gigabytes. Your Digimon will gain weight as you feed it and as you uh, get a bit protein. So if I give it a piece of meat, Oh, well, that's full, so I'm not going to do that, I guess. But if I give it a protein, which it will take, that should uh, increase it up to 9 gigabytes there. Which it did. There you go. It'll also lose weight as you train it. And if you get a mega hit, it'll lose a huge chunk. Let's go ahead and shake that up to red. It'll lose uh, 20 gigabytes of its weight just from getting a mega hit, which is, uh, you know, pretty phenomenal if you're trying to lose weight fast. You do want to have it very easy, don't they? That's unfortunate for the rest of us, but good for them, I guess. So... There is a minimum weight for each Digimon, so this did not reduce by 20 now, it reduced back down to 7, which is Pokemon's minimum weight that it can go to. On the next screen, we see our hunger, or as it says here, hungry meter, and this is whether or not our Digimon needs food. If the hearts are full, you cannot feed it and it will not eat, um, and as time moves on, these hearts will decrease. Each Digimon has a specific hunger and strength loss cycle, which is listed on the evolution guide at digitomahatchery.com. So if you are interested, you can find it there. But it's not super important to know that exact stat. It's just there for informational purposes, really. So if all the hunger hearts empty out, again, that would be a call that would happen. And if you do not take care of that call fast enough, you will get a care mistake. You have 10 minutes to answer the call for a heart loss of either hunger or strength. And you have one hour to answer that call for sleep uh, when they get tired. So moving on, there's a strength meter that reduces from... 
again, time as well, but will increase when you feed protein or do training. The next one is effort. So effort has always been a way on modern devices to be able to keep track of how many trainings you have done. And in the digital monster um, version 20th and color, effort did not perfectly correlate to evolution conditions and the digital monster color especially, you could have to train way more than the number of effort because every training you do gives you one effort heart. And the digital monster version color, or the digital monster color uh, had some training conditions that were much higher than 16, which is as high as this can track. But in the case of the Digimon Pendulum color, you will only ever be asked to do evolution requirements based on the effort hearts. Technically, it's still based on training and the code of the device, but that uh, you know, doesn't matter to the user because as far as you are concerned, you can just look at the number of effort hearts and be good to go on whether or not you've met um, evolution conditions. That does mean that the maximum number of required training for an evolution is 16. So there you go. Much easier to keep track of than on the old device. And speaking of keeping track of things, condition hearts. This is a brand new stat that has never been in any other Digimon device before. The closest thing to it was that the Digivice IC did have a reliability meter, and that reliability meter went down for care mistakes and went up when you did things nice to your Digimon, like playing with it and stuff. But in this case, um, this is similar because this does go down whenever you get a care mistake. Every care mistake you get, which again is the call light going out without you taking care of the um, requested task from your Digimon in time, when that call light goes out, one of these hearts will disappear, indicating that you have a care mistake. And the really cool thing here is that you see there's only two hearts here. There's no empty one, so there's nothing to refill. When a, one of these hearts goes away, there's nothing you can do at that point. The heart is gone. The heart is gone forever. But as long as you have one heart remaining, you're on what we call the regular growth path for the Baby 2 Digimon or the Child Digimon. And with that one heart remaining, that gives you two different evolution options, well, sometimes three for certain Digimon, but we'll get to that more later. Um, you're on the regular path option, but if you lose all your hearts, your uh, condition hearts, you'll be on the irregular growth uh, path. So a Digimon like Gomamon, while I, in regular growth, would evolve into something like Ikakumon or Rukumon, if it gets irregular growth, then it might evolve into something like Octmon. So keep that in mind as you are raising your Digimon that whether or not you have condition hearts does matter, but it's never more... Um, specific than that. It's just whether or not you have condition hearts. If you have condition hearts, you're on one path. If you don't have them, you're on another. It does not matter how many condition hearts you start with. Every evolution for uh, evolving into stage three and into stage four works that way. If you are higher than stage uh, four, if you're stage five or stage six or stage six plus, then your condition hearts serve a different purpose. And that is to let you know whether, well, I guess it's only for stage fours and stage fives actually let me rephrase that so for stage four and stage five digimon those digimon have conditioned hearts that will indicate whether or not they can evolve so if your uh, digimon runs out of conditioned hearts it will not be able to evolve naturally anymore and can only evolve via jagras for child uh, for baby two and child stages they are guaranteed to evolve into their next stage it's only adults and perfects that have that conditioned heart requirement where if they run out of conditioned hearts they cannot evolve naturally so I know a lot of people were very excited uh, about that when they first saw it. I was actually kind of skeptical about it because I was like, well, that takes some of the mystery out. You, but I, I always thought one of the cool things about um, Digimon is that, you know, so, and Tamagotchi in general, and a lot of V-Pets for that matter, is that you sometimes just don't know what's going to happen. And I like that. But some people prefer to know more, especially if you're the type of person that likes filling out the album. I've never seen album completion as like the point of raising uh, virtual pets it's more about the raising experience itself but for a lot of people that is important i recognize that and i think the condition heart meter is honestly a fantastic addition to this device and part of that was just because of the way it implemented it if it was just there to simply count care mistakes and you had four hearts and they just went down that would be one thing but the way it does it where if you don't have any that's where the path changes i think that that's just a really cool way to implement it we then have DP, which is basically a useless stat. This is something that I don't like about this device. You'll see here, Pokemon has 50 DP. You may ask why, because Pokemon cannot battle. So you're like, oh, well, does training cost DP? It does not. not. It does not. On the original Pendulum, it did. But on this one, it does not cost any DP to do training. So what's it here for, Pokemon? I don't know. Why is it 50? That's a lot. On older devices, you normally start with 14 DP or so for um, Child Stage Digimon, and it goes up as you get uh, stronger, or rather as you evolve into stronger forms. 
But here you start with 50. I think the max was around 70 or something, depending on the Digimon. Different Digimon will have different DP amounts. And it's just, there's, there's no real danger in it because Jogress also doesn't deplete DP. So the only thing that depletes battle or depletes DP is battles. But you have so much of it that it's like, it just doesn't really matter. So it's, it's weird that they did it this way. I think I definitely prefer it to be the way that it was where DP affects, honestly, I like that it affected training too. I thought that was neat prevented you from being able to um, just train wildly to get evolution requirements. Although on this one, the training condition, the training uh, amounts are so low that it doesn't matter anyway. But yeah, I don't know. It, it's weird. It just makes DP almost seem useless on this device, which is a shame. Uh, you then have type, which this uh, Digimon has no type, as you can see there. And th what we usually refer to as type is as attribute in the wider uh, world of Digimon. So there are five different types technically on this device. There is um, baby, there's free, there's uh, vaccine, data, and virus, which those last three are the common ones that you would always have on a Digimon device or Digimon game or Digimon anything. Those are the foundations, which Digimon Pendulum Original is what introduced those, by the way. Um, but for all intents and purposes, both baby and free, we count them as the same thing. We just call it all free. It's in reality, if you go into the wider realm of Digimon, then there's free, variable, no attribute, uh, unknown, and... Yeah, between all of them, they all basically have the same purpose on V-Pets. They're all just, you know, they're, they're just a, something that doesn't have a type a, a type advantage or disadvantage when fighting. So for, I follow the pattern that the uh, some of the Digimon video games followed and just call it all free on the guide. If it's blank for that attribute field, then that's just what we go with. Even though that's not the original definition of what free is, that's just what we use for simplicity's sake. So... No attribute, free is what we're referring to it as. We also see X for both B and J, setting for battle and jogress. This Digimon cannot do either because it is a baby. Once it hits stage three, it will be able to battle. Once it hits stage four, it will be able to jogress as it will at stage five. But for stage sixes, only certain Digimon have the ability to jogress. Then we see the winning percent, so this will show us the number of battles we won against the number we have total done and our percentage here. So winning percentage does matter for evolving into stage 5 and into stage 6. If you have an 80% or higher win rate, your Digimon is guaranteed to evolve. If you have less than that but higher than 40, it has a chance to evolve, and if you have less than 40, it will not evolve. So that is how that works. Um, obviously this baby can't have a win ratio because it cannot battle, so it cannot gain any of that. And it is just the ratio itself that determines evolution. It does not matter how many battles you've done or what the last 15 were. It's just that raw number right there is exactly what your percentage is. And that is it as far as the status menu goes. So then if we go to album, this will let us see all the different Digimon that we have raised. So we got Gomamon, we got a whole bunch we haven't. We got Ikakumon, we've got, uh, of course, Zudomon. There it is, looking good. And uh, yeah, why doesn't this go backwards? That's silly. They both just do the same thing. So there's no additional details to see about any of them. It's just a record. There are a total of 32 Digimon on each device to raise. Some of those slots are going to be hidden from view. For example, one, two, three, four, five. Next number six, right? Wrong. It is seven. And uh, that's because there are certain Digimon that can either be unlocked by connecting to another Pendulum Z uh, or another Pendulum Color of any uh, version other than your own. So if I connect to anything other than Deep Savers, I will unlock slots six and three other ones, but six is the most important one. And then also there are two slots at the end that are not shown until you achieve certain special Jogress evolutions. So those are the way, uh, those are the um, details for the album. And that brings us to the end of the status icon. So we got meat, we already talked about that. We got training, we already talked about that. We got battle, but can't battle this guy. So let's go ahead and swap out. We'll leave him over here. And we're going to switch over to Okuamon. Oh, who is not on right now? I've got to turn him back on, so let's do that real quick. We'll just set whatever time we want. I don't know if my dryer is coming through on this, but if it is, my dryer is singing you a song, and I hope you enjoy it. All right, so we got Okuamon back here. It's hungry because we just uh, loaded it. It does not save how many... Um, hunger hearts or strength hearts you had it just assumes you have zero so once it comes back on you don't have a care mistake or anything because the light's still on remember the light going off is the care mistake not just being there so we have filled it up we are going to train it We've got to go to blue which is just a couple shakes there we go 
As a note, I haven't really talked about it yet, but the uh, clacker on there, so the pendulum portion, the whole reason it's called the pendulum, in the original, uh, that pendulum was a physical connection that would happen and cause it to track the number of shakes that you did. In this one, that's just kind of a little uh, piece that's added to the back part of the shell that makes the shaking sound, but itself doesn't do anything. Instead, the shaking is handled by an actual accelerometer, just like the one in your phone. So in case you're interested in how that's working. So we got Okuamon, Okuamon can battle, and we've got several options in this menu, as you can see. So we'll start off, we're going to battle, we have quest, we have connect. If we do a quest battle, then we could choose a stage. You see, I've cleared stages one, two, three, and four, so I can now do five. There's a total of 10 stages to go through. And the way these work is that you go into each one and you're presented with a foe, in this case, Jagamon, who will be a challenge for Okuamon, since Jagamon is a uh, vaccine, but let's just try. Okay. Oop, just a couple shakes for virus type Digimon. Okay, that's not great. So the battle commences as such. They fire back and forth. If they fire with a one shot, then you take off one HP. If the two shot connects, then you take off, um, there they take off two HP. So, as you can see, they go back and forth. If one Digimon hits, the other Digimon will not hit, and it goes until someone has run out of all three HP. In this case, Okuamon has defeated Jagamon, and we proceed to the next round. There are three rounds for each stage of battles. Now we are fighting to Tonosama Gakomon, who Okuamon shouldn't have any problem defeating, I don't think. I say that, but... There is a hefty amount of RNG in these. The battle formula is available to view on the uh, manual at digitomahatry.com, so make sure to check that out if you've not already done so. Okuamon, good job getting hit by that music note. Let's see if your double scissor claw can do us uh, something better. There we go, that's much better. Tonosamamon, this looks like done. Does not look like he wants to be here at all. How's this last one gonna go? Hey, all right. All right, good, so that's round two complete, and we move on to round three. So we'll get a little warning message. There it is. And then we have Piccolomon, a data type which is weak to virus, so this one should not be a problem at all. Okuamon is also boosted by a traded egg, and it is boosted by having a full strength heart meter. That is the only way to be stronger. Well, and also, I'm sorry. It's boosted for me shaking the egg. It's not a traded egg. It's just, ooh, that, that was not good. Um, it's not a traded egg, but traded egg would also boost it. Oh man, Piccolomon defeated us. We're gonna throw those bombs at us. So rude. So that's a bummer. So we're gonna have to do that one again. Again, RNG is heavy, but yeah, so I got a plus 10 boost from the um, Shaken Egg. I've got a boost from having full strength hearts and I don't have a boost from a traded egg. Hopefully I will next time. Just double check, I am at full strength, right? Yes, I am. And that is the only thing you can do to increase your chances of winning because uh, yeah, there's training doesn't help you. Giving more protein doesn't help you. It's all just about whether or not you have a full strength heart and whether or not you have those egg features. Eh. That's a little bit harder. I haven't gotten fully used to the accelerometer yet, so let's just go and skip that battle. Oh, you died again to Jagamon. Come on, man. We gotta win this so we can show off a cool feature from beating stage five. All right, so we're gonna try this again. More deliberate shakes this time. Yeah, so there you go. As long as it couldn't, as long as you really do a good shake, it'll register it. I have to say, shaking mechanism in this is pretty good, especially compared to other accelerometer pendulum devices. Um, this is. Probably the best um, performing one out of all of them, which is nice to see. I know the Pendulum V was just whatever the heck it wanted to do, so I don't, I don't, I don't know what's happened with that thing. And then the um, Pendulum 20th, honestly, I got pretty good at it, but I know it's a struggle point for a lot of people to be able to hit those exact numbers using an accelerometer. So yeah, I understand uh, people's struggles there. All right, so let's try with Sonosama Gekkomon. I don't know why I didn't skip that last battle. You've already seen it. You don't need to see it again. There we go. And this time, Piccolomon will definitely be destroyed. Let's see. Not gonna skip this one though, gotta have the tension. It's important. Also gotta have my stuff centered. There we go. All right, good, good. Off to a very good start. Better than last time. Look at that, perfect. Defeated. All right, so we defeated the quest battle, and when defeating stages 1, 5, and 10, you get a nice little bonus. So check this out. We have unlocked a new background. Specifically, we have unlocked the box art background. Each version of the Digimon Pendulum color has its own color of this, so the box art for Nature Spirits is purple, and we're gonna go ahead and swap to that right away. And we'll do that in a minute when we show that off. Um, so it's purple, that's what we get. The Deep Savers one is blue. Haven't unlocked the Deep Savers one yet, but when I do, it will be a nice, pretty blue. So that is uh, going through quest mode again, 10 rounds, you unlock um, backgrounds as you go through them, 
and I highly recommend do and doing it because the backgrounds you get are pretty flippin' sweet. All those backgrounds are in the manual, we'll talk more about those in a sec. There's more features inside of the battles, so we also have connection. Not gonna do a connection battle just yet. We will be, but not just yet. That's because we're gonna talk about Joggers first. So Joggers spelt here with one S. I usually spell it with two S's because that's the normal Western way of spelling it. Um, you also may know it as DNA Digivolution, which is the uh, localized term for it. It's just a common, um, a portmanteau, meaning joint and progress. So Joggers, that's why I spelled with two S's because progress has two S's in it, but the device is not. I don't know why I'm still telling you about that. So moving on. Um, Joggers means taking two Digimon uh, and basically combining them together to make a new one. In this device, you have two methods of joggersing. You either have backup or connect. Backup means you have a Digimon stored in backup, like we have that Zudamon in backup right now on the other device, and you can choose to joggers with that. So one device can joggers. You don't need two devices to joggers, you can do it on one. The connect option will allow you to um, connect to another device and jog both Digimon will joggers. Important thing to know about joggers evolution, is that it's not truly the Digimon combining. Rather, the Joggers is just a requirement. So the Digimon that you are raising, it has an evolution condition that is met by connecting to another Digimon, either via backup or the prong connections. So anything having to do with the partner Digimon in the Joggers does not ch change anything about your Digimon. Your Digimon, if it had a traded egg or a shaken egg, is still gonna have those. If it didn't have those, but the Joggers partner did, it's not going to gain them because it's still the same Digimon and only the same Digimon. The other Digimon was just a, um, what can I call it? It was just a uh, material is the best way to put it. So we're gonna show off Joggers real quick because while Okuamon could Joggers on the original, that's how you got uh, Metal Edamon on the original Pendulum. Uh, the cool thing is Zudomon, while it did have an O for Joggers, it couldn't actually evolve up with that. And we actually have no idea why Zudomon could Joggers originally because never seen it do anything. Um, but here, it can. So we are gonna joggers these two together. We're gonna see what we get out of it. And oh yeah, we gotta make sure to... Actually, I should have seen if you could joggers without doing that. Let's see if we can joggers at no strength at least. Also, put that back to 24 hour time, goodness. I guess it's now as good a time as any. B brings up the clock. There's the clock. So it's between terrible time and normal good time. You have the ability to do that. Part of the reason why this is great, unless you choose. It's very nice that way. Oh, and if you need to reset the clock, just hit both buttons like that, bam, you can set it. Minutes, or hours, minutes, cancel. Or set, I guess I should say. All right, so let's try this out. So we're gonna go to the connection menu for both. We choose the joggers option. We choose the connect option. And we go into connect them like that. You hit it on one device, we get okay. As of note, you, uh, Akuamon would have lost DP from doing those battles, but can still Joggress, and I absolutely hate that. Uh, I'll talk more about that later, but here we go. This is who we got out of it. So Zudamon, since it Joggress with a virus type, became the Data Jumbo Gamimon, and Okuamon, because it was a virus type Joggressing with a vaccine, we came... Did I say that right for Zudamon? Zudamon's a vaccine that Joggress with a virus, so you get a Data. Okuamon's a virus that Joggress with the vaccine, so you get a Data. Um, so we got Saber Leomon, we got Jumbo Gamemon, this guy was on the original, this guy was not, and I'm absolutely thrilled he's here. I love turtles, in case you didn't know. So getting a turtle in Deep Savers is very, very happy for me. So very thrilled to see that one show up. And that's all Joggers is. Now, the annoying thing is, is that if I go to my status here, my DP, wow, it's full even. I hate that so much. <laughs> what is the point of DP? <laughs> I knew it, I knew I'd still have it. I just didn't know it would be completely refilled too. Man, DP just truly does not matter on these devices, does it? Whatever. Um, also, you can see data battle. Yes, joggress. Yes, most stage sixes can't joggress, but Saber Leomon can because it requires a connection to a very specific Digimon. Not going to show that off right now. I could because I've got an Acom that has the Digimon codes to be able to uh, joggress with a pendulum color. So those are at the usual place if you need them. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, give this guy a training because he's uh, so data's for yellow. Let's shake it up. There we go. Let's be shooting there, big old missiles. Nice. Uh, but yeah, so that's Joggers. That's how that all works out. So yeah, pretty dang neat. So let's go ahead and continue talking about that menu there. Now, one thing that I did notice that I didn't know before 
was that I don't believe we unlocked the background. Again, I'll talk more about backgrounds in a second. Yeah, we didn't unlock it. So Joggersing, we also didn't unlock any new slots. So Joggersing is not able to fulfill requirements for connecting uh, to other devices. So instead, we're going to do a battle real quick. This is the wrong. <laughs> I guess now is also a good time to say you can't battle these two things together. Um, the only thing that could battle with the Digimon Pendulum color is either another Digimon Pendulum color or the Digital Monster color. So sorry, original Pendulum can't do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and fight these guys up. Um, are they both at a full everything? Hunger doesn't matter for battling, but we're gonna fill that up anyway. So thrilled to have Jumbo Gamimon, it's great. All right, um, I didn't plan that by the way. I, I, I did know that that would happen, but it's not like I knew that uh, that would occur when they first came out. I just started raising towards Zudomon and Kulon because that's what I wanted, and I was lucky enough for to do that. I was also hoping that this would become, um, what was I hoping for on this? I was hoping this would become Eldoradimon, and I'd have two turtles, but unfortunately Eldoradimon is not the Okuamon virus option, or Okuamon, uh, yeah, Okuamon virus vaccine option. That would be Tonosama Gekomon that gets that, but whatever. So we've looked at Joggers, let's look at battling between connection. So we have the ability to choose Pendulum, we have the ability to choose Digimon, which is the digital monster color. We're gonna choose this one. It's gonna ask us to shake, just like in training, both need yellow. There we go, both got it. We connect them, hold them together nice and tight, initiate on one device, wait, release, and observe. All right, so they're both firing off super hits, so battle only lasts uh, up to three rounds. Oh, they're off sync though. I didn't know that would happen. Interesting. And there we go. So Jumbo Gamamon is the victor and has unlocked slot six as well as slots 14, 22 and 30. So those are the guest stars. Each device has one line of guest stars. And then we also get new backgrounds. As you can see, just the backgrounds from each other's device. So now I've got Nature Spirit's background over here, Deep Saver's background over here, which is pretty sweet. So that can only be done through connection battles. It cannot be done through connection joggers. Just as a note there. Uh, interesting that they limited to that, but that's fine because those are also easy to get ACOM codes. As a note, you can also get the Wind Guardians, Metal Empire, and Virus Busters backgrounds as well. Those devices have not even been announced yet, but I have successfully crafted the Digirom codes for those devices, which will be coming at some point, I'm sure, and you can uh, get those off the Digirom site and get, unlock those backgrounds. If you do all six, you are going to get a snazzy uh, folder continent background, which I am looking forward to unlocking after this video. So moving on in our menus, we're done with the connection one for right now. Um, we've already looked at the poop one. And then next up is lights. So we have three options here. First one being light, does exactly what you think it would do. And the funny thing is, is forever, there's always been the on and off option for lights for Digimon, but for the digital monster color, they got rid of that. And I have to ask myself, why was that never the case before? Like, it makes so much more sense to just have it immediately happen, but whatever. Um, so if we will go ahead and simulate though, what happens here, oh, he's in darkness. Turn that light back on. Uh, we'll go ahead and simulate what will happen here. So if we go, who put that there? We go. If we go forward to after it's bedtime, which is gonna be at least, I mean, that'll definitely work. I don't know exactly what it was. You may have noticed there, the background also just got, oh my gosh, look at his sleeping sprite. <laughs> that is so cute. Oh my gosh, I love that. That is perfect. Good job, guys. Absolutely great job. I, I, oh, sorry, getting off track. Hadn't seen this yet. Looks amazing. So um, the background got darker just now. That is because for all the field backgrounds, including the fields from the digital monster color, I didn't mention that before, but you can unlock those. Um, those will change color depending on the time of the day. So after four o'clock, it becomes dusk and everything becomes slightly orange. And then after, what is it, seven o'clock? Uh, double check the guide if you want to know for sure. Um, and that's in the PM, by the way. Uh, since I have to specify for using the wrong time keeping, which whatever, don't at me. So after uh, those, t at that time, it'll become a darker blue in this case. Actually, I really rather like the nighttime Deep Savers background as opposed to the daytime one, funnily enough. Um, it's not that different, but just the darker tone looks a little bit nicer to me. So this is that for you. Um, so once it's asleep, you'll see the call light is on. We have one hour to respond to this, so plenty of time. So we go to our lights menu, turn it off, and there we go. So at this point, 
you know, it's kind of sad because you can't see your Digimon anymore. And that sleeping sprite was really cute. And while you could just turn the light back on for the digital monster color with no repercussions whatsoever on the Digimon Pendulum, it immediately wakes up your Digimon. Now, by doing that, I also just gained 2% to my injury rate when I lose battles. So, neat. Uh, that's easy to reduce, again, just a successful train or win battles to reduce it. But this means that the Digimon, after uh, 10 or 15 minutes, one of those two, is going to fall back asleep. It's going to call again, and you have to put out light again. So, kind of uh, bummed that you can't just turn it on and look at your sleeping Digimon, because, you know, feeding it and anything would have woken up too. But, oh well, I'm not going to harp on that too bad. Um, so then we have Cold, which when we hit that, Digimon goes into a freezer and is just staying there and completely frozen. It does not age. It does not have the evolution timer ticked down. It does not lose hunger hearts. It is completely paused. So if you need to not interact with your Digimon for a while, then just use this option to easily pause it. Take it out of that. And we've already shown off the backup feature. You can have up to one Digimon in backup. Um, that is it. All right, he's sleepy. I guess freezing it and unfreezing it immediately does that. Let's go ahead and change the time. Random note, the way the time moves there, different from the original. There, it's an instant thing. Uh, the sliding time is a holdover from the digital monster and by effect the digital monster color. I guess they just didn't think about changing that when they uh, made this digital pendulum color, but whatever. All right, so we are awake. Um, again, backup feature we already showed off. You can have one backup Digimon and the Digimon in backup is also frozen. Same things that apply to cold mode apply to being in backup, but the backup Digimon can be used as Jawgrass material. So then we go to our bandage icon. Doesn't need it, but we have the option to cure either sickness or injury. Sickness is indicated with the speech bubble. Injury is indicated with the skull. And you get sick from either accumulating eight poops on the screen or from getting to be 99 gigabytes in weight or already being 99 gigabytes in weight and being fed a, another protein after being if you're not already sick. So there is one other way to get sick. It's actually really fun, is that if your Digimon is sick and it does a connection battle with another one, then that sickness is contagious and the other Digimon will also get sick. So that's always been a fun feature. Not a lot of people know about that one because most people aren't going to battle while the Digimon's sick. But sure enough, if you battle while sick on any Digimon Pendulum device, the sickness is contagious and will transfer. Um, so yeah, that's pretty neat. And that is all of the menu options for this thing. So obviously, um, you know, it's a pretty simple device. There wasn't too much to go over. But there is a one more hidden thing, and you've, we've already seen it in action, but if you hold down the C button for two seconds, you're met with the settings menu. So we have four options here. We have background, brightness, sound, and power. Uh, background lets you change what background you're using. So right now we're using deep savers. We've also got this nice little living quarters here. A lot of people immediately thought of uh, Digimon's house when they first saw this. I certainly did from uh, Digimon World 1. It's not that, but it certainly gives off those vibes for sure. There's this thing which I have dubbed the net, which is just a general, like, early 2000s stock website style thing. Like, for real, I remember seeing this when I was doing web design back in the day. Um, this is, oh, not, obviously not this exact thing, but it's very similar. A lot of people see this like, oh, does it have to do with the X? And I'm like, no, it has nothing to do with the X because nothing having to do with the X program looks anything like that. Um, there's lots of graphics for the X out there for the ruined old Digimon world and the X program itself, and none of them look like that image, so I don't think that's indicating anything at all. Um, we have the Nature Spirits background that we just unlocked, we have our Deep Savers background, and uh, that's what we're working with right now on this. So, we then have the Brightness menu, which right now I'm at maximum brightness because being anything lower is weird for the camera. See? Refresh rates are weird, man, and I don't want to... <laughs> yeah, whatever. We're not going to get into that right now. So I have this at maximum brightness, but you don't need it to be at maximum brightness, especially when indoors. It is a little difficult to see outside, even at max brightness, but not too crazy difficult. Um, certainly easier to see this outside than it is to see any other older Digimon device in the dark. So there's that. <laughs> but um, minimum brightness is plenty for indoor use, I have found. Um, you might want it a little bit brighter just because I find the middle brightness does just kind of look better, a little bit more vibrant, but that's just me. You may not feel the same. And then we have sound. So this device is pretty flippin' loud. Um, we have two options. We have loud. Well, actually three options. We have loud, off, and kind of loud. So, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to really do a comparison because I'm going to be leveling the audio on this anyway. So you won't be able to tell one way or the other which is louder. But, yeah. Well, you have those. There's also the ability to mute just by hitting both the A and C button like normal. And if you go back into the settings menu, you can 
unmute it directly from there, or you can hit A and C again. Both will work to mute and unmute the device. And then the last menu option is power. This will immediately, with no questions asked, turn off the device. Nice thing about this is this saves and powers down. So if you had done something really cool in the past minute that wasn't saved for whatever reason, which a lot of actions do cause these things to save, so I can't imagine what that might be. Like an evolution triggers a save, for example. Um, but it's the safest way to turn off the device. So generally speaking, you can also, um, and I say this because you can also hit the reset button to reset, and you can also um, hold down the C button to completely power down and um, fill it for 10 seconds, which gives you a little warning noise to let you know that's coming. But the safest way to do it is to just use the um, menu option to do so. So we'll go ahead and load this back up. Load. Well, this time it seems to have saved my brightness. Neat. We did it. Is this max brightness? Yeah, it saved it this time. Maybe it saved it last time and I just had it really low for no good reason. Alright, back to 24 hour time like a normal human. And let's train it up. There we go. Alright, so we have talked about all that jazz, so we're gonna move on to talking about some evolution details. So I'm at stage six right now. Uh, to get there, I had to do a variety of things. So stage one, as we saw, is as simple as just waiting 10 minutes for your Digimon to evolve, and then it will do so. Stage two, once it has reached that, does have tighter requirements. Well, and it has requirements in general. Stage one doesn't have any requirements for evolving. Stage two will evolve no matter what you do, but that evolution is based on whether or not you have condition hearts remaining, and how many effort hearts you have filled in. There's also one last thing that it's based on, and that is whether or not you have a slot unlocked for number six. If you have that slot unlocked, you'll be able to get the guest star, which is Angoramon on this and Jellymon on this, both guest starring from Digimon Ghost Game. The Nightmare Soldier's device has its guest star from Digimon Seekers, which is Lugamon. We don't know who the guest stars will be on the remaining three devices. Currently, my money is on Terramon, Commandermon, and uh, Gammamon, which Gammamon's basically confirmed, but we won't know until, for sure, until we get those uh, announcements for those devices. So those guest star lines will only be possible if you connect to any other Digimon Pendulum version that includes, if I, so if I do, um, if I have a version one, I can connect to two, three, four, five, or zero, any one of those will work and cause that unlock to occur. So as long as you either have one other device, which most people who bought these do, but if you don't, if you have an ACOM, you can also simulate that. Again, Digiroms are up on the website. So once you have evolved into stage three, you do, and that happens after 24 hours, I should say. So you're stage one for 10 minutes, stage two for 12 hours, then you're stage three for 24 hours. Same kind of conditions. You either have conditioned hearts or you don't, and you have a, a certain number of effort, and that determines which way you will evolve. Once you're in stage four, things do change. You're in stage four for 32 hours, and in those 32 hours, you have to avoid failing evolution because if you uh, once you've reached stage four, you do have that option. You are no longer guaranteed evolution. So to not fail evolution, there are a few things you need to do. First is you need to have conditioned hearts remaining. Again, conditioned hearts are right over here in status. There they are. I've got four of them. So if this was to evolve, I would just have to make sure I had at least one of those four hearts remaining and that will prevent um, that requirement from causing evil failure. Another thing you have to do is you have to battle at least 15 times as that stage. So if you're stage four, you have to battle 15 times as stage four, no matter how many times you battled previously in a lower stage. So make sure to get those in. And then you also have to have a win rate of at least 40%. And I say at least, but really you want 80% to guarantee evolution. And that's not too bad because any battle whatsoever counts. It doesn't matter if you do the first stage over and over again. Those battles all count towards evolution and should be fairly easy to be able to uh, get that win rate to 80% or higher for most Digimon. So as long as you meet those three conditions, you'll be able to evolve into stage five or into stage six naturally. Again, that takes 32 hours. The evolutions do happen right when the timer runs out. They do not run again. If you failed evolution, you have failed it forever. So make sure to keep that in mind. This isn't like the vital bracelet where you can just go again. It has to be done within that time frame, or else it's not going to happen at all. Uh, so stage five, exact same conditions as stage four for evolving naturally. And then stage six doesn't have natural options, but as we saw with uh, Saber Leomon here, 
You do have certain Digimon that can evolve further. So Saber Leomon can Jogress with either Metal Etamon or they can Jogress with Eldoradimon. And that will go to a certain Digimon whose name is difficult to pronounce. And I'll let you look it up on the website yourself. So apart from the natural evolutions, of course, there's Jogress, which we've already talked about and already demonstrated. Jogress is based on what the attribute is of the Digimon you evolve with. So in this case, uh, again, Okuamon, who is a virus, Jogress is a vaccine, that resulted in data. That's the normal pattern. Datas normally become whatever the um, attribute of the Digimon they're jogging with is. Vaccines will become themselves unless they go to a virus, in which case they'll be a data. They cannot become viruses. While viruses will become themselves if they, uh, unless they uh, evolve with a vaccine, in which case they become a data, they cannot become vaccines. There are exceptions to that. That's the general rule, but there are exceptions to that. Almost every Digimon can be evolved into naturally or via Jogress. There are exceptions to that as well. For example, Waymon cannot be evolved into naturally on the Deep Saber's device. You have to do it via Jogress. Um, it's one of the only two, actually, that can't be naturally evolved into. Um, but yeah, it's different depending on what each Digimon is, but most of them will have Jogress and natural evolution options to be able to reach them. So you have a lot of options, even at Stage 4 and Stage uh, 5. It's not like the... Origin, or it's not like the digital monster, the original, the um, 20th version, or the color, where once you evolve into adult, the rest of your path is set. Unless it's the version 3 digital monster color, where Chimeramon's also thrown into the um, game as well. But you always have options. You're never locked into one thing. So that is the gist of evolution. As for what you get, you know if you're watching this channel that the guide exists. Um, they are all on there. Every single evolution is on the guide now. You can find it on there. If you're not sure what something means, click the FAQ, click the legend, click the Digimon itself. All of those contain additional information that may be helpful. So make sure to do that and not just look at the chart and be like, I don't know what a condition heart is. And there's, it's all defined. It's there. I promise you, it's all there. So that's evolution. So what happens then when a Digimon has been alive for a while? So again, stage five or stage four rather, is guaranteed. You will reach stage four no matter what you do, unless you're really bad and you end up killing your Digimon first. But that's difficult to do, I will say. Um, but stage four, since it can uh, fail evolution, and stage five can also fail evolution, after you have failed those evolutions, at that point, your heart, um, your heart rate loss will double, as will your poop rate. So your Digimon is going to be needy more often than it was previously. So if it was losing a heart every hour, it is now going to lose a heart every 30 minutes. Uh, stage sixes, since they don't evolve naturally ever, they still have a um, time limit in which before that happens, same with stage six plus, they both have the same time limit, which is 48 hours after that point, they do start losing things more quickly. After those time limits, so after 32 hours for stage four, after 40 hours for a stage five, and after 48 hours for a stage six or six plus, if they are still in that form, then they have the uh, misfortune of being able to die once they have hit five care mistakes in total. So if you are looking at your Digimon and it has no condition hearts, then you know that the next care mistake you get will kill it. So it's, condition hearts are once again a handy way to be able to keep track of that sort of thing. As for dying in other ways, there are several ways to die. You can also get sick or injured 12 times while in one evolutionary form. That does reset every time you evolve, as do most stats, except for win ratio. Most other things will reset. Um, that's not a combined uh, meter either. It, uh, the sick counter, you can go up to 12 times. The injury counter, you can go up to 12 times. If you have 11 of both, you're still alive. It's only once you hit that 12, that's when it happens. Um, if you remain sick or injured for six consecutive hours, not including sleep, but if you remain uh, for six consecutive hours, that will kill your Digimon. There's also a very weird condition on this one that's never been on any other device as far as I know, or if it has, it's like impossible to meet it. Because the idea is that if you get a care mistake from um, being hungry 20 times, specifically hunger, not strength, but just hunger, then you're, um, you'll die from that. But... If you fill your um, hunger hearts all the way back up, so if you feed it four pieces of meat, that counter is completely reset. And I don't get that whatsoever. I don't get what that's for. Because of course, you're not going to just accidentally get 20 hunger care mistakes without thinking. You'll probably get sick before it dies at that point. I don't know. I haven't done the math. But yeah, that's not going to happen. And once you uh, pick it up and you see, oh, it needs food and you feed it, and it's good at that point. So I truly don't know why that death condition exists. I don't think anyone will ever encounter that unless they specifically try to. 
Uh, let's go ahead and put Saber Leo Mon up as we continue to talk. We cycle between them, get we'll let them share screen time, why don't we? Um, so the other thing that will happen is that uh, those five uh, care mistakes for after your uh, lifespan is up, those will also kill you. So getting more, than, getting like 20 care mistakes does not kill you um, before that time. I know that was a death condition in previous devices before the digital monster color, but that is not a condition on these. So you can get care mistakes as many as you want, apparently, as long as you have not been alive too long. So that is neat. And upon dying, you do have the ability to get a traded egg and that traded egg condition is not random like it was on the digital monster color, which is very welcome. Having it be random was a very strange choice, especially with only a 30% chance of getting it. So now the conditions for a traded egg are that you have to be either stage five or higher, which makes sense that that was true before too. Um, you have to have either failed the evolution or be past your lifespan. So either past 40 hours for a stage four or past 48 hours for a stage six or six plus, and your win rate must be 60% or higher. doesn't matter how many battles you've done, that win rate just has to be high enough. And if you meet all of those conditions, then you will get a traded egg, which looks like a little egg on a computer on the um, test screen. So there you go. Traded eggs, not too bad to get. I think most people will be able to meet those requirements. And those traded eggs do give you a boost to your power in your uh, whatever Digimon hatches from that egg. So that is pretty much it as far as general functionality goes. Again, all these things are written in the manual on digitamahatchery.com, so make sure to check that out if you have questions or if you're not sure of something. But now let's go ahead and move into comparing these devices against some of the previous ones. All right, I changed the lighting situation to make this a little bit easier to see here. Um, so here we got our digital, um, our Digimon Pendulum color and our Digital Monster color. So obviously these are going to share a lot of the same bones behind them in terms of... Uh, what they're like, what the screen is like, what the, you know, a lot of the features, a lot of similarities between them, but the differences between them are basically the, most of the same differences between the original Digital Monster and the original Digimon Pendulum. So, um, for one, there's more Digimon. So the um, Digital Monster color has 18 to 20 Digimon on each device, and the Digimon Pendulum color has almost double that with 32 Digimon on each device, so there are more Digimon to be able to raise, and those Digimon have a uh, wider variety of options for evolution, which is also pretty cool. Um, again, this one could shake. You can hear it shaking, there you go, shaking. Uh, this one doesn't make any noise for shaking because it doesn't do anything, it just bumps the camera, that's all it does. Uh, so there's that, so there's no shake functionality on this, if that matters to you. <laughs> uh, there's no, well, there is some jogress on this, but it's not a major mechanic like it is over here. Pendulums originally are the ones that introduced Jogress, and so that was a big deal. Digital Monster did not have that. So that's a difference there. And uh, one other cool thing is that, you know, these devices, the Digital Monster Color, do have a uh, fun variety of backgrounds. Also, you notice that Texas is in Japanese, uh, while this is in English. Pendulums have always been in English. Don't forget that. There's no Digimon names on this either, so there's nothing to be in Japanese at all. But the Digital Monster originally was in Japanese in Japan. And um, so the Digital Monster version 20th, when it first released, was in Japanese, and the Digital Monster Color is in Japanese as well. But pendulums are always in English. They're a universally a usable device, if you know English. I guess that's not quite universal, is it? But either way. Um, so yeah, so you've got the um, backgrounds here. So there were several different good options, as you can see, and each one of these backgrounds, if we were to battle, in fact, why don't I just show that off real quick? Got them both here, ready to go, huh? Kabaterimon, are you ready to die? Nope. So we're gonna go to uh, connection on both. We're gonna choose Digimon. We're going to connect. As you see, I didn't need to shake because this is a digital monster style battle, simpler battle type, where it just matters who has the last big hit. I I just lose focus that badly. There we go, look weird. All right, and who would have guessed? Jumbo Gamemon is bigger. For information, uh, this does not have an unfair advantage against this device, like the old pendulums had over the digital monster. But yeah, there you go. We see we unlocked the background. This one did not unlock the background. There's no pendulum backgrounds on the digital monster color, but we did get the desert. Perfect for a deep savers device, isn't it? I don't think we'll be using that one. Um, and if you get all five backgrounds from the digital monster color, you'll get File Island, like you see Kabuterimon hanging out in right there. So. That is a fun little thing you can do. They can battle each other. It's a simplified battle system, but you'll unlock backgrounds. But I do find there to be a bigger variety of backgrounds on this, because not only do you get all six fields, you get all five digital monster versions, plus the box arts, plus these other special field 
backgrounds that are really cool and a few bonuses beyond that um the one thing is is that the box arts had day night cycles on the digital monster they do not have day night cycles on here i'm assuming that was done to just kind of free up space for the other backgrounds which i think is more welcome i don't need the day night cycle on backgrounds of boxes so that's fine for fields yes love the background night um day night cycles but for like just a you know a circuit image not necessary for me um so yeah i've already mentioned the lights thing i'm not going to bring that up again but yeah the way lights work is slightly different here compared to this and uh the most important thing to note is that can't change this to 24 hour time but you can on this absolutely superior and i, I will say that i have always loved the pendulum series more than the digital monster series in general but that's kind of a more of a, a you know just preference type of deal i i do like these more than these but that doesn't mean these aren't good it just means i like these more um wake up times also different so these woke up at 8 a.m which i rather liked these wake up at 7 a.m reverse of how it happened with the digital mo uh, monster version 20th and the digimon pendulum version 20th Th those had the opposite wake up times but whatever it's fine i wake up close enough to seven most days so that's good um, and yeah, not much else to say about it there. The screen is basically the same. The structure of everything is basically the same. There's just a few features that are different between the two of them. All right, so here we have the Pendulum Z Deep Savers with the Pendulum Color Deep Savers. We've got Marine Chimeramon hanging out over here. What a great Digimon that is. So here's the funny thing, is that the Pendulum Z, I have always considered to be a bit lesser than the than a few of the other moderns. Specifically, it's I don't like it as much as the Digital Monster X, um, I think. Because this basically is a Digital Monster X, but with different functionality, and I didn't care for some of that functionality. The Pendulum 20th I thought was great because it had a better variety of Digimon, but even at this point, I'm kind of... Actually, no, especially at this point, now that these were released, I definitely like this more than the Pendulum 20th, at least. It's probably my second favorite black and white modern at this point. But, it, you know, I've always given it a bit of a hard time. Funny thing is, this is, like, almost identical in functionality to the Pendulum Z. The only real differences are that like Pendulum Z has all these items you can do and it's got a much more intense quest mode, which are points for it, I guess. Um, but there is one big drawback from the Pendulum Z and that is the connection unlocks. So both of these do connection locks the same way, or the connection unlocks the same way, uh, where you connect to another device of that series and you'll make um, unlocks. So here you get those guest stars. Here though, you get, the first unlock's pretty cool, all right? So you get a Digimon from Digimon Zero Two uh, Adventure. In this case, you got Armadimon, not really deep savers, didn't even include Vikemon, so it was a weird choice overall. And the other ones, whatever, they're fine. But with second unlock, you get Agumon in deep savers. You got Agumon in the Ancient Spirits, and you get Agumon in Nightmare Soldiers. In the Wave 2s, you got Gabumon, and you also got Agnimon and Wolfmon in both of them. It's just, they didn't fit. The Digimon in here definitely fit way better with the theming. We got Jellymon, it's a deep saver, yes, obviously. Angoramon, definitely Nature Spirits. Lugamon, absolutely Nightmare Soldiers. Those choices all made perfect sense. Here, they just added stuff you didn't want. Like, I go out of my way not to unlock the extra Digimon on the Pendulum Z because they make it worse. Like, it's not fun evolving into Agumon on a device where you want to raise fish. <laughs> like, it's just not. Um, but overall, they are very, 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 very similar. Like, surprisingly so. The joggers functionality from this is like one-to-one -one with how it works on here. Although a little bit more organized as, par, as far as attributes go. So I don't truly know why I like this one more. I honestly don't. I will say the colors on this are amazing. Better than this. This, this one's based on the actual uh, colors, uh, color of the shell over this one. The shell body itself, like, honestly, I'm good with both. I like both. Um, but the cyan frame and buttons, absolutely superior. I love this checkerboard print. It always has to have. I know some people aren't into that, but I am. I am likely going to be gutting one another one of these soon because I, I mean i have already bought it so i guess i am bought an extra deep savers pendulum z just so i could take out the frame and buttons because i don't want to take it out from this one um and i'm going to put them into this one over here because uh i hate this orange it also looks red on the camera i, I it's a very like deep orange a very orange ready orange um but it is orange still it's not quite red but yeah not not a big fan of that so yeah, not too sure why I like the pendulum color more. Like, honestly, the color is great. The backgrounds, also great. I love being able to swap the backgrounds. I would have never thought that that would be such a fun feature for me, but being able to put them on a different landscape based on what they are doing, like having a beach on Deep Savers, that's going to be great. I love that. The, there's an island background you can get for it, also great. There's just a lot of really good options. So I like having that. There's a lakeside one that'll be good for some of them. Um, yeah, I, I, the backgrounds are just great. It's, it's a really fun feature. So I think that's uh, the, just being in color and all that. 
which I love black and white V-pads. I don't know why that makes it a little bit more charming for me, but it, it does. It works. It's cool. It honestly should have been in color a long, long dang time ago, but yeah, either way, both are good. We'll leave it at that, but they're very, very similar in terms of functionality. All right, so next up we have the Pendulum version 20th. This is the device that got me into the Digimon community at large. I may have been into Digimon since 1997 or 1998, whenever I got that first digital monster, but I was not part of the community until I got this. Again, Digimon Pendulum is what originally got me obsessed with the VPET side of Digimon. Had VPETs before, but Digimon Pendulum made me obsessed. And uh, so when they made the remake of this, I'm like, I want to do stuff with this. I want, I want to make a guide for this. I want to do it immediately. And so that's what I did. I went and made a guide for it and start joining the community to be able to help make um, that guide. And it was a ton of fun. So this was a very important device <laughs> in my history, that's for sure. And as you can see, we got a little Zudomon on there. Just like uh, this, this is a remake of the original and it's got a lot of the same Digimon on there. And so the big elephant in the room with it though is that the number of Digimon you can raise on this is substantially higher than on this. Even unmodded, this has four times the number of Digimon, uh, over 120 different Digimon that can be raised. I do have mine modded. I can raise over 200 different Digimon, 240 to be exact, different Digimon that can be raised on this one device. And I can raise two at a time. Check that out. I will say raising two at a time, I thought it was cool, but it's not a key feature to me. And I think having a backup is honestly just as good. Um, so yeah, not a not a big deal to not have that. Copymon also like, cute idea, also not super important to me. Backgrounds are way better than Copymon. I will say that for sure. Um, oh, who's beeping? Which one of you is it? Oh my gosh, you're so loud. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, which one of you is so loud? Is it you? Flip, which one is it? Oh, it's Kabuterimon. There we go. That's what happens when you're doing a Digimon show. You will get beeps. Will not apologize. There we go. Uh, so yeah, so Pendulum 20th. Um, by default, there's three of the original eggs on each one, plus a few unlockable eggs. The unlockable ones aren't as varied in evolutions, and that's kind of one of the things that puts this ahead for me, is that evolutions are more varied because you have more joggers options and just uh, some cool stuff added in there. I don't think that having as many eggs is as big a draw for me as it once was, um, and just having that many Digimon in general, because here's the thing, right? I have all six different original pendulums on here. You would think that means it's as good as having them all, but... I like raising two different devices at a time, like a lot of the time. I like having both of them. I like being able to swap between which thing I'm using and have things to raise there. I just enjoy that. I, I do. I enjoy that more than having them all on one device. That is not necessarily the general consensus, and that's fine. That's just kind of how my brain works, is I like having them separated like that. Um, screen on the pendulum is also kind of, uh, the pendulum version 20th is also kind of weird. It's kind of green, whatever. Pendulum Z screen is way better. Um, this is still better than the Digital Monster screen. It's way better than the original Digital Monster X screen, that's for sure. I, I meant Digital Monster version 20 screen. It's better than that one. Not the original Digital Monster screen, which was fine. So, yeah, uh, this is still this is still a very good device, but this is, I think, more enjoyable to me uh, overall, especially because each egg got much more fleshed out. You know, Aegisdramon wasn't in this. Deep Savers was like the only egg that didn't have a super ultimate, and Aegisdramon was right frickin' there to use. So I don't know what was up with that, but now it's got two... Oh, that's what I should say about the Pendulum Z, too. Freaking final evolutions in this sucked. Like, they were... You, you had uh, three total different Digimon that could be a naturally evolved into Super Ultimate uh, for all the Digimon, and none of them match with the fields except for Nightmare Soldiers. So Deep Savers, yeah, you can get Apoclamon or Armageddon, which I don't want either of those on Deep Savers. Here, you get um, Aegisdramon, which is a Deep Saver, makes sense, and Mitamamon, which... While it's not really a Deep Savers, I would say, it at least is more thematically appropriate because of the Joggers evolution involved. So I'm good with that. But yeah, the, the, that was so dumb. But here, the eggs got a little fleshed out sometimes, the original eggs, but not very much. Here, there is a new um, ultimate stage, or three new ultimate stages for every single version, which is pretty flipping great. So Jumbo Gamimon on this one, and uh, we saw, uh, or we talked about Alderadimon on the other one. Those are brand new ones that are on there to fill in the gaps for ultimates. Um, so that's a very welcome thing and kind of what helps make this uh, a better option for me, especially because also here, stage fives only do have one evolution option for the most part, whereas here they have multiple, which I'm always a big fan of having more evolution options, whether they be natural or jawgrass. And that brings us to the original Digimon Pendulum, which this is a bit of a uh, interesting comparison because you would think that between these two, they would have been able to improve everything about the original in the remake, but 
Not quite. There's still some charms about this old one that I do like, but we'll, we'll talk about that. So one of the biggest things that I had a problem with is the sounds being used on this. So if I go into, uh, let's see, what's a good way to... So we'll go with this. So I'm going to put this real close to the mic so you can hear it. Really shrill. All right, so really shrill sounds, okay? So I want you to focus on that. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna train on this. I think it's just two for Zudomon, right? Oh, wait, I didn't do it by the mic. Here we go. So yeah, they sound very, very different. And the Pendulum 20th had basically identical sounds to what this did, but this does not. And I don't know why that is, and it does bug me. It shouldn't bug me, but it does bug me. <laughs> because this being a remake, I wanted to be able to like have those nostalgic sounds, but they're not quite the nostalgic sounds. They're basically new sounds that sound kind of like the original, but aren't the original. And I found that to be a bit of a bummer. Um, some of the other functionality changes, so this had care mistakes if you would sleep disturb. This does not. I don't necessarily think that's necessary for it to have it, like whatever, it's a cool idea, but I don't need that. This at least does have, um, you know, consequences for disturbing sleep, but having the care mistakes was pretty neat. Um, one big thing is that all moderns that can evolve in their sleep, which is everything but the digital monster version 20th, will alert you when that happens. And so, you know, if it's 3 a.m. and they're about to evolve and they'll make their noises and go crazy and wake you up and make your partner mad at you. So that's uh, that's how that works. So of course you can mute them and that won't happen, but with the pendulum it was very considerate of you. If you had the sound on and it evolved while it was sleeping, it would not make any sound and I do not know why they never did that on any modern device. It is absolutely baffling. Another point against this, unfortunately. Um, one cool thing that not a lot of people know about too is that this device, if you get too many care mistakes on a Digimon while you're raising it, or a certain number, or maybe even just one. I don't really know the threshold for it. I don't know the exact mechanics, but getting care mistakes will uh, cause your Digimon to become disobedient. So if you could try to go to training, like, you know, normally you just go right in the menu. If it's being disobedient, if it got care mistakes, um, it'll just shake its head and say, no, I don't want to train. Now, you can just immediately hit train again and it will do it. And so that's not really a consequential feature, but it was cute and I liked it. I, I wish they would have brought that back. Um, Evo times also are pretty different. So I will say, Baby 2, in general, is not given enough time in any Digimon device other than the original. You get Coralmon for like two days on the original Digital Monster. On the rest of them, they just try to shove it out of the way as fast as they can. So 12 hours isn't too bad. These two are about on par with that. I wish it was longer, but whatever. A lot of people are like, well, you can't do anything as a baby. And I'm like, well, yeah, but maybe you should be able to do something as a baby. And then that time should be expended. It's not necessarily a problem with the baby. It's a problem with how baby is used, but whatever. Um, from that point on, though, they're definitely too short. So. Child to adult, 24 hours, whatever. Adult to perfect is 32 hours. That's not very long at all. And then the um, perfect to ultimate is um, 40 hours, which is also pretty dang short. The times on the digital monster color were longer than that as well. Here, though, I will say some of them are too long. Um, the stage, or the, what fun, the adult to perfect can take up to like 70 hours, which is honestly insane. I think that's a little crazy. I think two days is probably about right, or at least a day and a half. Um, and then the ultimate stage takes about as long. So I do think it should take a shorter amount of time to reach stage five, but reaching stage six over like two to three days, I think that's also pretty great. So here you can get done with the whole evolution line pretty quickly, which is, you know, not what I want. I like to be able to have the just, you know, raise for longer. I want it to last at least a week for one evolution basically is what I what, what my most preferred is. So this one's a little too long. This one's quite a bit too short is I guess what I'll say, at least for later evolutions. For the earlier evolutions are about on par. Um, and then there's a cool feature that they did use on the Pendulum 20th, which is that if you get a sleep care mistake on this, then your Digimon will wake up later. Every sleep care mistake you get will make it wake up one hour later up to a cap, which I don't know what the cap is off the top of my head, but I thought that was pretty neat. Pendulum 20th is just, if you get a care mistake for sleep, you wake up two hours later, which Still cool, like that. Uh, this doesn't do that at all. It will wake up at the same time no matter what. So yeah, it was neat, not necessary, obviously, but would be cool. Um, also, sleep time, and this has been a problem for moderns in general. This is not new. 
It's been happening since the Digital Monster version 20th, but this the latest bedtime for this is uh, 2300, which is a bit too late. It's not midnight, at least. Thank heavens. I hate that some that most of the modern um, stage six Digimon go to bed at midnight. That is just dumb. Um, this one, the latest bedtime is 10 o'clock. It really respects your time. So it can, I think it's as early as uh, 7, but as late as 10, which is honestly a great range. This one, early as 8, late as uh, 11. So honestly, not bad either. Um, but yeah, that's a... It's a, just little things overall. I think the last thing, though, is the big one that has been a problem with also every modern. So again, not points against this specifically, just points against modern is that if you were to train this Digimon successfully, it would increase its effectiveness in battle. And you could get that effectiveness boost up to 40 times. So basically effort counted for something really cool. Um, you would make your Digimon stronger to do successful trainings. No modern has had that. It's all just been if you have full strength hearts, that's what makes you stronger. And that is boring as heck. Uh, I, I wish you could just do like this did to, and to make your Digimon stronger because having that extra effort is it felt good. It was a very cool way to do things. People still think that you need that. People are like, oh, I need to increase my effort to make my Digimon stronger. But no, on moderns, that does not matter. It matters on this a lot, but it doesn't matter on this. So there's still some ways to boost strength, but they're all just very simple things. Um, I liked having training count for that. You know, pills don't do it either on this. It's kind of a bummer. Um, last thing is that, at least as far as... Um, well, actually, no, that's the last thing as far as things I prefer on this. But neutral thing is that these shakes here, they actually count with the clacker. This clacker does not uh, count shakes. It's the accelerometer. I already mentioned that before, but I figured I'd just bring it up again just in case you forgot. All right. So then what's better on this one? Um, so this didn't have any on-device battles. You did have to connect to be able to do battles. So having them directly on here and being able to jogress on here, too, is just it, it's definitely uh, it's definitely better overall it's nice to be able to do everything on one device even if you're raising multiple having that option is good i will also say by the way that um if you're joggersing don't do connection joggresses with this they feel way too cheap do backup joggresses only be like me it makes your device more fun i promise you i wouldn't lead you astray much um there's also you know you're only raising one on this there's no backup i think having backup is a fun option um obviously none of them have that back in the day so that's not a big deal but just being able to at least switch between an, uh, one other Digimon is cool. Um, evolution options on this are pretty limited. Like I said earlier, once you hit adults, you really only got a... Um, well, no, sorry. Once you hit a perfect, you only got one option to be able to do. And some perfect Digimon don't even have evolution options. So Waymon, Jagamon, and the other vaccine slot, uh, perfect slot twos, apart from Asuramon can't evolve further at all, which is a bummer. So they filled in a lot here and gave you way more options as far as uh, joggersing goes, so I thought that was nice. Um, despite, you know, I, I will say, the counting shakes method on these is fine. Like, you just count to a certain number, so I do two on Zudomon. This is way better. Counting to a certain number of shakes is fine, but having to memorize the shakes for everything isn't necessarily fun, and I think having a target color is just better overall. To, so that just really streamlines the experience. So there's no more being like, oh, do I need... 13 or 14 for this one. No, you just need to shake to yellow and you're done. I do prefer that. Um, and then evolving into Zudomon, as we see here, it's not as easy as you would think it is. <laughs> There's no 100% evolution. At most, you have a 70% chance of evolving into perfect. And if your perfect can evolve further, it also only has a 70% chance. So I'm not guaranteed to get Marine Angemon on this thing by any means, uh, which is frustrating. Um, this Okuamon that I have over here, I did try. I started raising him at the beginning of the month. First time failed. It was the second time I was able to get it. So I had to raise it twice to be able to get that. It does make it feel good when you do get it, I will say. But I do like being able to have a guaranteed evolution over a non-guaranteed one. I, I prefer that for sure. Um, and then one last thing is that this device cheats. Is that if you face a digital monster original, then this device will win almost every single time because it is literally coded to. It is registered as the strongest type of Digimon on the original devices with more um, b boost points than the other devices can even get. So it cheats. This does not cheat. That makes it a little better. So there's pros and cons between the both of them. I will say I'm probably going to be running this more for the most part just because uh, it's a little bit more convenient, especially with the on-device battles. I like being able to draw aggress with backups. I think that's a ton of fun. I still love this device very much, but this one is just a... A little bit nicer to me. Also a lot easier to see. Listen, it's not just the fact that the light, but Deep Savers has a very dark background. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely be running the Nightmare Soldiers one more than I'm running my current Nightmare Soldiers, which I've run like one time. 
and then this happened. <laughs> it's Pumpmon. You may have already seen him the other day, but he's just there. Forever. Frozen. I'm not resetting him. I'm just leaving the device like that until the batteries die. Because, <laughs> honestly, it's fun. Um, but yeah, so, overall, there's a lot of good about this device. I really love it. My overall thoughts on it are that it's great. I am very excited about it. I definitely think it's a better buy than the Pendulum version 20th. Really ask yourself when you want to buy something with a lot of eggs, do you like all the Digimon and all those eggs? Because if not, you don't really have a need to have all those eggs. Having just a few is better for me. Uh, well, not better necessarily, but having just a few is fine because the most important thing is raising the Digimon on them. It's not about collecting them all. This isn't that franchise. This is the franchise for raising the Digimon. So that is uh, what I am all about on these. It's about having that raising experience and you don't really need a huge roster to get that raising experience. I think this is... A pretty good sized roster, all things considered. 32 Digimon is still a lot of Digimon, especially when they're all of the same theme. Having 32 aquatic Digimon is freaking brilliant. I love it. Absolutely great. That's the other great thing, is the fields always love the fields. Being able to pick which one you like the most. So if you like the bugs and the rocks and all that, you go to Nature Spirits. But if you like the spooky Digimon, you go to the Nightmare Soldiers. You don't need all three to have a good time. You just get the one that has uh, the type of creatures you like on it most, and there you go. So definitely like that. Overall, I've been having a ton of fun with it. You know, it's got a few quirks that I'm not super big into, like the DP thing, I still think is just dumb. It's like, why even include it? Which, I want DP, but I don't want it to be as simple as it is. Um, I think that, uh, apart from that, most of the things I am definitely into on this, I do kind of wish there were more battles to do, but, you know, I get it. They're not only pulling from the device itself for battles. They're not pulling from the other uh, Digimon, because... All things considered, this can't actually store that much information on it, as much as you would think. Um, even in looking at theoretical maximum on the digital monster color, like, we're talking like maybe 96 Digimon could have been stored on that, and that's not a huge number when you consider that the other moderns can store, like, you know, 200-something on them. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, it's fine. I think the, it's a fine loss for all the features we get. Backgrounds, again, really freaking cool. Love all the backgrounds on this. Really great with that. So, I'll have a, you know, a shortened review video out. Uh, it'll just be using most of the same footage, so you, you don't have to watch that if you've watched your way all the way through this. If you have watched your all the way through this, um, please comment below with your, uh, let's see, what's something no one would ever think to do? Your favorite cereal. Put your favorite cereal in the comment below if you are actually, if you actually got this far, and thank you for watching this far. Um, but yeah, I don't feel like you have to watch the other video too at this point, because this was a lot it's gonna be a lot for me to edit too so i should probably wrap this up and start doing that but either way overall love this highly recommend very big fan of it it's very much fun um love the way it looks love the digimon on it so i'm very happy about it i'm looking forward to seeing the wave two uh whenever it does come out i'll be getting all three of those as well and you know if we get more colors down the way that'd be pretty neat but for now i'm happy with this if you do have more questions please make sure to check the guide go to digitomahatry.com look up on there see what things you might be able to find about what you need to know. It's all on there. I promise you, it's all on there. Um, but for anything that you can't find, or if you just want to talk, or if you want to hang out and ask questions there, the Digi uh, the uh, Digitama Hatchery Discord server is there. It's just discord.gg slash Digimon. Link is in the description. Make sure to go hang out there. If you liked what I did today, please leave a like. If you want to see more of this, please subscribe. Um, I don't know if it helps the channel out. I don't know. I'm not really trying to build the channel that heavily. It's just Digimon stuff. If you like it, you're going to find it. That's all there is to it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I will be doing uh, more videos about the Digimon Pendulum. I'll be have news videos coming out shortly about Digimon Con. That's uh, just a week away, so that's pretty neat. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it for now. So hopefully this was in-depth enough for you. If not, the heck is wrong with you. I can't talk for this long. My throat's starting to hurt. Whatever. I'm going to go start work on getting this put together. So uh, yeah, until next time. Bye.